Hi everyone and welcome to CMG Color Chats. Color Marketing Group is a global network of color professionals and the premier association for color forecasting. Normally our members are able to network, to learn, and to share knowledge at our many in-person events such as our International Summit, which is coming up shortly, and our regional chromosome color forecasting workshops. But in these days where we really can't be together, we are trying new ways to engage with our membership. That is why we're starting these, these weekly Instagram live color chats where we pick a different CMG member to interview. I am Bridget Frizzy, Creative Director for Kehoe Designs and Black Oak Technical Production. And behind me is our in-house studio where we are showcasing forecasted trends and concepts for the event industry. And if you're curious, we are sitting in our 2022 vignette called Wild Theory. And Wild Theory really is all about the mystery of evolution. I can't remember who wrote this. However, it is so relevant in expressing the mood of this vignette. It says, nature and technology will intimately blend to create new systems, materials, and products that mirror the physical world with the digital world. We will use DNA and microorganisms to solve the macro problems of tomorrow. And if you look behind me, right here, you will see the child. And if you don't know who the child is, you'll know it as Baby Yoda from Star Wars Disney Plus The Mandalorian, which season two drops October 30th, and I'm so looking forward to it. Um, but what is really important about this is why are we so intrigued with this alien creature? What is it about its origin? Is it from the past? Is it in the future? Is the future coming through the past again? We just don't know. And that is the mystery of evolution and wild theory. And I share this because that is why it's so cool to be part of CMG, because you get to be part of future thinking and you get to forecast colors that will emerge in two to five years time. Any questions um, on holiday events or events in general or Black Oak Technical Production, just DM us at Kehoe Designs. Okay, so today you are in for an absolute treat. I get to interview Judith Van, Van Light, and I need her to explain how to say her name. She is the senior designer at Aviant Colorworks. Um, she is the, also the creative director of Color Forward, which is the forecasting tool at Aviant. I need to ask her some questions on that as well. Judith is also the immediate past president of Color Marketing Group, and I think she is one of the most fascinating people I have met. Um, let me see if I can get her now. And Judith, if you can send a request, I will get you in. Hey, Judith. Hey, Bridget. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Very well. Fall has started, though. I mean, I right? saw your um, your story, and it's been you know raining all day long. So yeah. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. But where are you? I'm at home. I'm in Milan, so I'm in Italy. Yeah, no traveling for me um, for now. Oh my gosh. It's so interesting. I was going to be there for the Salon de Moble, um, and obviously it got canceled. So I am rescheduled for next April to get there. And I hope when I get there, I can hang out with you for a little bit. I'll be here, so anytime. <laughs> That's so cool. Okay, so to start, uh, first question, where is the first place you're going to go to find emerging trends once you're allowed to travel again? Well, I actually just received a very interesting offer for a project, uh, which really? obviously I can't talk about in, into detail, but I need to get to an urban area, um, a European urban area. So probably that's going to be between Paris and London. So um, oh, that's gosh. what I, and I know officially within Europe, we can travel, but obviously business travels have been um, for now not allowed. And um, with the situation currently, probably it's not at best, but that's where I hope 
um, to be getting at um, at least early spring next year. Yeah. And then where do you think is going to be the first place you're going to go for fun? I, for fun, uh, well, I'm planning on um, going back home. So I'm planning on going back to the Netherlands, at least for Christmas. But for fun is, um, I think definitely for, um, I'd like to get back to a place that I actually, that I did my last trip, that was in February, I went to Mexico. And I just knew that I was going to be back soon. Um, I didn't expect all of this to happen. So I do think that that's going to be one of the first places that I'll be visiting. That is so cool. All right. Can you tell us a little bit about your career path? Because you're so fascinating. Well, I'm one of these few people that just um, got in the whole color world, um, not by mistake, maybe, but I got the, the good push from um, an ex-colleague of mine um, within Kawasaki Motors Europe. So I started working there in R&D as the only non-Japanese, also the only European, only female in Europe. And at a certain point, they said, you know what, we've been to Color Marketing Group, you know, to get a little bit of feel of what's going on on automotive colors as well. And we really think that you have this, these insights and you have this sensitivity to color. So I think you should actually go. And it was um, Tsuyoshi Shibata, actually, he's still in Kawasaki. And he had me join Color Marketing Group in Berlin 2007, the European meeting. And I just, I, I came home. Uh, people who talk my language. Um, I, I really felt, I was like, I want to be part of this world. These are my people. This is where I'm supposed to be at. Um, and that was around the same time that I started to do trend research, market research for uh, Kawasaki. So I would, um, you know, inform the Japanese designers back in Japan and Kobe what colors to use for the European motorcycles. And that's how I started off with Color Marketing Group. Um, throughout my Color Marketing Group, too, uh, interestingly, I actually got involved in the board of directors and then obviously I got on the executive committee. And that's also how I, um, through the networking of CMG, interestingly, that's how I rolled into my current job at Avian already um, nine years ago. Yeah. Really? Oh, and before I, I, I do talk, how do you say your name? So, oh, it's very complicated. Von Fleet. Von Fleet. Oh, yeah. That's yes. very German. Yes. <laughs> How you pronounce it, but that's fine. I won't be no, I'm fine. sorry. No I'm one pronounced it correctly. It's fine. I apologize for that. Um, and so, and what is your focus now? Like, what are you focusing on now? I actually just finished the Color Forward 2022 workshop. Oh, wow. um, so uh, with my global team, and that was for the first time in history, and I hope also our future, the virtual uh, workshop. We always come together for five days with my global team that is based out in Chicago, Sao Paulo, and Singapore, and then obviously my team in Milan for five days, just physically. And obviously that was not possible this year. So we did an 11-day workshop on Zoom, um, wow. which we successfully completed. But yeah, that, that's what I'm currently working on. Yeah, oh so that is so cool. Um, and then can you talk to a little bit about the process that you go to to um, call out these global colors? Well, what we focus on mainly for especially the first three days are the stories. Um, so everybody has to come up with their homework presentations. Uh, everybody has to do their trend research, whether that is quantitative or qualitative. Obviously, nobody could go to conferences and fairs this year, at least not physically but everybody comes prepared. So everybody does the regional trends and those are presented on the first day. Um, and those are then clustered and we see where we have commonalities, where are similarities and what we really as a group think for 2022 is gonna be important for consumers and also obviously um, bigger brands and companies to jump onto. Mm -hmm. And only then we go to the mood board. So only when those four societal trends are set only then we actually go to the mood board creation. And the colors are only chosen on the last day. Um, wow. So color comes after you know what's happening in the world, um, how people are feeling, how people are behaving, and only then you're um, able to actually translate that into an aesthetic. So now do you just study like European ones or, and then, or do you also kind of um, look and see what's happening in other regions? Or do so you as a that global lead, yeah, as a global lead of the team, I, I do um, both. So I do as well European as global. 
Um, but technically, I think with the globalization, everybody looks everywhere, which generally I ask my team. So I, I'll ask my Latin American team to, to focus on their region. Um, mm -hmm. Same for North America and for Asia Pacific. Um, I have a broader view because I do Europe, Middle East and Africa. Um, but generally, yes, I try to be a little bit more global. Um, but then with regional influences, um, although most of my customers are indeed global. So um, many are here in Europe, of course, but they, they, they need a global view. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. Okay. So away from work, yeah, which <laughs> is your favorite paint color? Um, right now and what would you paint your um, home walls or your office walls if you could and I see that you already have some color but um, what, what's yeah. next? So I, I don't have a lot of um, I have mainly roof and windows so that actually um, is, is a huge problem for my for my personal apartment and I have a lot of paintings which bring bring in a lot of colors as you can see in the uh, but yeah. I'm definitely into the green season right now. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe that's the um, the need for us all to, to have some some parts of nature coming back to um, to our homes, but also to our workplaces. So this is a little bit, of course, this this trend where we see biophilia coming back in into architecture and, and homes. So I would definitely be on the um, on the light green, so agave. Uh, light cacti greens. Uh, I'm still a little on the sage. I know sage is not completely cool and on trend anymore, but I do feel that that has a soothing effect um, for your homes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, mine is brave ground. Have you heard of brave ground? It's um, yeah. It's uh, the color of the year for 2021 for Dulux. And I oh, listened yes, to it. yeah to creative director um, Marianne Schillingford explain it. And what I loved about her explanation um, for Brave Ground is she called it her and mother. And so this color is, has such personality and such versatility. It goes into so many different palettes. I just love that. I, I'm dying to do that. And she, what I loved about her explanation is that we're moving away from just one color walls, right? We're doing yeah. walls that have horizons and you know, and different patterns or different um, shapes cut out through them. Um, I, I just find that so fascinating. Okay, what book um, are you reading right now or are you listening to or what's your favorite podcast? Um, I listen a lot to um, Goop. Uh, I listen a lot to, to Clever as well. But as a book right now, I'm reading The Unfeathered Soul by uh, Michael Singer, um, so which cool. has... Um, you know, I've, I've been on, on, you know, reading a lot throughout the whole period of COVID-19. And this is one of the ones that really triggered most in me. Mm -hmm. And I do think it's, it's a book that all of us have to read. It's about your inner roommate. So it's about that voice that continuously is just chattering and it's telling you stuff. And it's just, it's your subtitle technically, which sometimes we're not aware of. And sometimes it's just highly frustrating and actually not very healthy to listen to either. So that's what I'm actually now, um, that's what I'm currently reading. I'm reading a few books, but that's the one that um, definitely is my favorite right now. Yeah, I think I'm with you there. I'm reading um, Think Like a Monk by yeah, Jay Shetty. I tried to get that, but it, it sold out. I tried to get it. And oh my they gosh. actually, they were actually gonna, I could get it in, in Dutch, which obviously is my mother's tongue, but I want, just wanted to get it in English and it's not available currently. So I'm, I've been putting my waiting list. I'm like, what? Okay. <laughs> it is so good because it's so relevant to our, our way right now. And um, I've been listening to it for a week now and I'm just taking these these little steps that, that he recommends in there. And it's it's been really, really good. And it's brought me a lot of happiness, which like, why wouldn't you want happiness? And I just finished reading this other book, which I think you would really enjoy. It's called Emotional Agility by Susan David. Um, she does a, this fantastic TED Talk. And one of the sayings that um, I walked away with and I constantly say is courage is not about the absence of fear. Courage is fear walking. So anytime I'm like struggling or I'm like in like this mode, I'm just like, Courage and fear walking. Courage and fear walking. That's me. I'm courage and That's fear great. walking. <laughs> Isn't that good? Reminds me of Renee Brown, who would, uh, yes, I love yes. her, her podcast as well, where she says that you can be courageous and vulnerable at the same time. And that's, I think, exactly how so many of us have been feeling. Because we always have the feeling that we, especially as women, we always have to be courageous and, and, and fearless. But I think at the same time, showing that vulnerability is something that 
we we have to learn because I think it's something beautiful, and uh, whether it's either private or at the work floor. Yes, I totally agree. Um, and let's see. Oh, so one book that changed um, that changed my life and launched this path that I'm on is More Alive with Color by Latrice Eisman, um, and along with all her fabulous books and uh, color workshops. And one of her famous quotes is, um, I have never met a color I couldn't love. And I think that solidified my obsession into this color arena. So, <laughs> and then if, besides The Untethered, is there one book in your life that you can recall as like, this one is the one that changed my life? Um, there's a few of them uh, over the last year. Um, I, I remember as a child, I read Kevin, uh, which is a beautiful book, which changed my life as a child, um, um, which is also written by Kevin uh, with a K. Uh, but definitely, I, I read also as a younger girl, I, went, I read The Alchemist by uh, Paulo Coelho, oh, yeah. which I've actually recently reread, and that's that is a, if you read between the lines, because that's really a book together with the seed of the soul, which is very explicit. Uh, but um, The Alchemist, it's, um, it's a beautiful, it has life lessons in there. And then last year I started with Eckhart Tolle, which I think that's where I made that switch, you know, um, obviously, you know, the conscious path instead of, you know, just going around wandering throughout your life, um, being unconscious constantly. Wow. It's so good. It's so good for you. Um, what challenges you and what do you, what do you still want to learn? <laughs> oh, a zillion languages, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, How many languages and, do you um, speak now? I speak, I, speak five, speak. I speak five languages. Officially, I speak five. My friends tell me to count Spanish, but I'm, I'm not counting Spanish because I've never officially learned that language, which for me means I, I don't, you know, officially speak that. Um, I'd love to speak Arabic. That, that would be one of my languages that I'd love to speak. Uh, what I really uh, want to learn more um, is to solely listen to my intuition, which I think is um, a very strong lesson for all of us, no matter what we're, what we're trying to decide on. But yeah, definitely languages. And I've always been very jealous of my brother, who's a pilot, and that he can fly. So maybe one day I'll get my PPL. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's incredible. My nephew is a pilot and, um, and he goes up in those little Cessnas and I'm like, uh, I don't, I don't know, yeah. but I do. I think he's just so brave about it. Okay. Um, you are fantastic at self branding. What is your advice for the younger generation looking to get into these fields? To just get out there don't think about what what will people think um who am i to self-promote myself um ask um get that email out connect to people just yeah be courageous um be vulnerable just also ask for help um and also just there's also something as there's no such thing as stupid questions but i think especially coming up being brought up in 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 the netherlands we are brought up with this um humility factor mm -hmm. um so what we we are taught is that you don't ask and also it's difficult to ask for help but especially we have this way of saying just be normal like don't try to stand out and in in a professional world there is sometimes a need to stand out there's this need to put yourself forward so don't be afraid be indeed a little bit fearless and just be proud of what you've um, what you've reached, where you are, wherever you are in your career or in your studies, mm -hmm. and get that word out there and just tell people what you can do and how you think you can help them as well. So what what you can be for them or for that company. Wow, that's awesome. And who do you find um, inspiring right now? I know that's big question too that that is a very difficult question for me because <laughs> no, so no i mean i have answers but for me they don't lie necessarily in the design world so right. there's a very dear friend of mine who actually is a cmg member who i think has an amazing experience and knowledge and she's a very special spiritual person as well which is dodie horn which oh, yes. um she's actually she's going to do a color speak 
um, in oh. October on trend spotting. So she did trend spotting uh, last year with us uh, in New Mexico as well. So I, I love her, but my, my color inspiration actually does not come from the design world. It comes from the art world. Because mm -hmm. I, I actually also used to work in the art world in between jobs. Oh and I still miss it. I miss it a lot. So yeah, my, my inspiration are artists like pop artists like Alan Jones, um, the American Hopper. Um, wow. When I just go to their, like when I go to the Art Institute, I could stay in for five hours back in Chicago. It's, yeah, that's where I get my inspiration. That's fabulous. I totally agree. And I always think, um, you know, I could do it too. And so I have all these paints and uh, are you a painter? <laughs> are you a, a, an artist as well? No, I'm not. My family is full of artists and I've just, I've, I've tried as a child, but then I, I never did again. But yeah, maybe I, that, maybe that's something I should actually get back into. I said I was going to do it in this downtime that I'm, I'm in. I got everything, the pencils and the pads and everything. Because I was an illustrator um, starting out <laughs> and I just, you know, it just needs to die, just go, you know just dive in and start because I think you can produce such great art at the same time. Um, okay. Uh, if you could give one piece of advice, what would it be? I know huh. it's a big one too. No, don't care about what other people think or say. They follow totally your totally. gut feeling. Don't, don't get stuck up here. Go down here. Your heart, your intuition, they always speak the truth. Always. And I think especially for women, we always have that initial feeling, which often can feel like something that, especially when something's not right, we feel that and we ignore it. And that's, you know, that's the biggest danger in, in many decisions that we make. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that is that intuition, which we got out of in touch out of touch with and that's I hope that that a lot of women are actually and men get back into contact with yeah because yeah. it's always right that first feeling it's always right it's so true I in mine I just said that you know um, you don't need approval so many times it's like you know you go ask your friends or you go ask your colleagues or you go ask and at, at the end of the day it's like you, if you have your intuition and you really know what's you know deep inside you don't need approval to move forward. You just go do. And I think exactly. that's... Okay, so last question. What would, um, why would people want to become a member of CMG? And oh, how huh. they connect? Oh, there's a zillion of reasons now. I'm probably gonna, you know, have Sandy set me together, our VP of communications, a full list of what I'm... Um... <laughs> It, it's so for me personally, it has brought me everything I know about color. Um, it has brought me job opportunities. Um, it has offered me a lot of projects within Aviant, um, but also uh, I've been part of trend panels for, for Mix Magazine, for example. Yes. Uh, being able to um, be part of the executive um, board, and I was actually the first European, so non American, yes. to get on the executive board. Um, a couple of years ago, and then being the first non-American president of an international organization, first millennial, by the way, which actually, you know, I'm in between, but let's say I'm still a millennial. That was, for me, those are opportunities, not just to learn about color, but to get involved, to show your passion, and to get others involved as well, and to do so much for this organization. For me, it has taught me a lot in my professional life, um, teamwork, working with committees, uh, working on a lot of different topics, you know, also working with, you know, headquarters staff, you know, for me, like getting the finances together with the treasurer and, and getting on, um, on people, hiring people. I mean, that for me, that was all new. Um, but I think definitely the best thing is to have an international group of friends because we are all friends, no matter what. And just when you have a color question, it's we're all within reach um, because of obviously the internet, but also um, because of our networking and how everybody is so open and so inclusive in receiving you. Um, I've never not felt at, but at ease within the organization. Um, for me, it's also been interesting to to see the um, future thinking come to life, for example. Yes. Um, now that we are in a, because I'm still in the EC, of course, we're in a very difficult year. Um, I think it's a difficult year for everybody, 
but to get everybody together with EC and our board members and a lot of all our volunteers to just get everything right virtually, like with these um, initiatives, like with Instagram, also together with Indeed Mercedes, Lana Zuri, and also getting the color chats, color speak, which actually we have a color speak right. tomorrow going on as well. There's so much to learn. There's so many opportunities beyond, beyond the social aspects that for me, it's, um, I would not be able to give up on, on CMG, not, not ever, not even if I would, you know, change jobs or um, I think it has a zillion uh, opportunities for many out there that are in color uh, and in design in general. Yeah. And then um, can you just tell a little bit about the webinar tomorrow that you're doing? Yes. That you're hosting? I'm hosting tomorrow a color speak. So that is um, a webinar, um, which okay. I'm going to talk about the four key colors per region for 2021. So we have four um, key colors that come out every year. They're presented at the international summit. Um, so these were presented um, actually, um, these are for 2021. So they were presented a while ago, but we never went really deep into why these colors per region but also the stories behind them. So again, why did we choose these colors um, throughout the region? So I'm gonna be talking about that. So it's gonna be a deep dive into these four colors where we think they're gonna be applied to which markets and that all of course for 2021. So that is um, tomorrow and you can still register. You can still sign up. It's free for members mm -hmm. and it is 25 US dollars for, for non-members. And it's gonna be going to be a great opportunity to also um, you know ask some questions and also get some more information about um, those colors that we think are viable for um, and very directional for next year I think it's so really I think what's really interesting about that is that I get a lot of people that tell me oh um, I don't really believe in trends and I don't you know <laughs> but I often have to correct them in that it, in the sense it is it is these things that are moving forward. So it isn't something that, you know, it just comes out of like, oh, let's pick purple. It, it, that's not how it works. There's so much into it. And it's so much of these cyclical portions of, of, of life as to why certain colors are rising and certain ones are descending down. So it's never a, like a, a meaning of force. It is just where we're going and how we're moving forward. Yeah. A lot right? of people think that we push color and that we push yeah. trends, but that's actually not true. We are just mere observ observers exactly. of what's happening in the world. And we yes. just are great at putting that together, um, filtering obviously what we do think is important and to, to mention, but we indeed, we observe them. We, we make a great story out of them, of course, because we are storytellers. Correct. And then we translate that into emotional, um, an emotional translation into aesthetics, which of course can be different for many. But what we do is we do this with a global team of different industry experts. Um, so there's actually no, no gain for particular industries. Um, well, there is a gain, and that is to learn more about color and to have those first insights, but it's the collaborative part of this international network that we have and companies don't don't have that because people then are obviously from from the, the industry per se we have people from different industries that yes often think alike and often don't but we always manage you know we always um get those colors right and those stories right and that's the beauty it's the the talking about it receiving the color palettes and the trend story it's beautiful you can read it you can play with it but being part of it that's that that's always been key to me you know having that voice being heard and being part of this amazing group of people that are indeed spotting those those stories and yes. those trends and making and them I, relevant correct and i think it's also um connecting those connecting those those dots when you see them happening and then all of a sudden it's like that you almost have fruition it's like oh there there it is <laughs> Oh no, the the auto has it too. Oh no, housewares has it too. It's like you could see how it's developing and why, you know, and each one of them has a different way of explaining why the color is the way it is, but it is relevant, right? And it is it is yeah. our tomorrow. So it's really And we also throughout the color alerts, we of course try yes. to make people sensitive to the fact that we we, mm -hmm. we got them right. You know, maybe not yes all you know we our world color forecast consists of 64 colors globally 
Um, so that obviously we can't do the confirmation on all those colors, but we do pick every month that color that was forecasted for that year and to show people that it's been seen on multiple products in different segments in different parts of the world. Because um, it's great to do color. It's great to do storytelling. Oh my God, But is. obviously people are going to ask you, did you get it right? And then, <laughs> yeah, you need to show that you got it right. I mean, right, yeah. exactly. And more than, okay, I always like to end with a quote. Um, and <laughs> mine is from Philip Stark. Um, and he said this in 2011, but I find it so relevant now. He says, with creativity comes great anxiety, great effort, and a great desire for love. To be creative, you have to be curious. You have to be generous to want to understand. You also have to want to be loved. And what, what is yours? If you had to pick one beautiful. quote. I have, if I have to pick one, um, it's this one. It's from Paulo Coelho. Um, oh, yes. Fantastic. Yeah, so if what one finds is made of pure matter, it will never spoil. And one can always come back. If what you had found was only a moment of light, like the explosion of a star, you would find nothing on your return. Very deep. God, that's so <laughs> good. So, so good. Oh my God, I love this. Thank you, Judith, for all your generosity and Thank you. for speaking with us. I think um, this was fantastic. Thank you very much, Bridget. All right, you take care. Take care, bye-bye. Bye-bye.